in the forest you'll find a fabulous banquet, a fairy wall. If you close your eyes and you open your mind, the veil disappears and you'll see it all. Hi my angels, it's Haley Reese, and for today's video I'm going to be doing kind of another just like sitting down and talking about why spirits and ghosts are the way they are and why certain things occur because not too long ago I did a video on why children and animals see ghosts and you guys seem to really, really, really enjoy that video so I figured today we would sit down and talk about why spirits and ghosts come to us in dreams more frequently than coming to us in the real physical day-to-day -day life and physical world. <laughs> The reason I wanted to really get into this one was because I mentioned on my vlog channel, Daily Haley, which there's a link to in the description, um, that my grandma who passed away just recently, not grams that you guys have met, but my, my dad's mom, um, actually came and visited me in my dream. And my grandpa who passed away as well, um, who was like the love of my life, I, I love him and miss him so very much. Um, he tends to visit me in my dreams as well. And I've never actually seen my grandpa um, in like this physical dimension. Like I've never seen his spirit or anything like that. But when I dream, sometimes he comes to me in my dreams. And for the longest time, I always kind of sat back and wondered like why it is that spirits and ghosts tend to come to us in our dreams more frequently than they do in our current dimension and when we are awake. And I did a lot of research on this. I kind of really evaluated the situations and I evaluated, you know, when I had these personal experiences, what was going on, how it made me feel, and I combined that with my research. And I'm pretty sure I've come to a conclusion as to the reasoning behind this. So that's what I'm gonna talk about in today's video. So essentially, I've kind of come to the conclusion that there's two main reasons. Um, well, there's a bunch of reasons, but there's two main reasons that I think are the most likely as to why they come and visit us in our dreams rather than when we are awake. And the very first has to do with something I talk about all the time on my channel, and that is the spiritual ego. And essentially, when your spiritual ego is up, it's more difficult for any sort of spirits or um, spirit guides or anything of those sorts to communicate with you because you'll rule it out as you know There's a reason that this could have happened or this is a scientific explanation or my mind's playing tricks on me or I'm overtired Etc, etc, but when we dream 99% of the time our spiritual egos are actually lifted because we're in a space and a headspace where absolutely anything is possible when you are in a dreaming state your mind is completely receptive and open to absolutely anything because it wouldn't be unusual to see somebody who's passed away in a dream or somebody who you've never met or somebody that, you know, maybe a famous celebrity that you wouldn't talk to on a day-to-day -day basis. That isn't unusual in dreaming. Dreaming is something that we can make up, you know, whatever our hearts desire. So it's much easier for a deceased loved one or a spirit to come into your mindset and into your um, energy while you are sleeping and communicate with you then than it would be in any other time. Because, you know, if Harry Styles walks up to you on the street in real life, you're gonna freak out, but in your dream, it might seem a little more realistic. So if somebody has passed away or there is a spirit, it's much easier for them to actually communicate with you in your dreaming state. Another reason uh, as far as the spiritual ego and sleeping goes is the fact that our spirits are very, very aware um, while we are asleep. You know, people can astral project, people can have out-of-body experiences, but people can also become very, very intuitive while they are sleeping because your physical body is asleep, but your soul is forever awake. So while you are sleeping, it is much easier for you to actually tap into, you know, your psychic abilities or, or to really get in touch with your soul and to the other dimensions and to, and to all of those types of things. So while you are asleep, you are much more aware than you are even when you are awake. So that's why sometimes people will say, you know, I had a dream, this is going to happen and it happened. Or, you know, I went back to this time in my life and I swear I was there because your soul is awake while your physical body is sleeping. It's kind of the same concept of, you know, when somebody passes away, it's just it's just an empty shell. Their soul's out doing its thing. Well, while we're sleeping, yes, we are within our bodies unless you're astral projecting, but your soul is awake, your soul is alert, and it's able to really, and the things that it's able to do while you're sleeping are absolutely extraordinary. So it's much easier for any sort of spirit to communicate with you while you're asleep. Now, one of my other theories that I've kind of come 
to, to learn from personal experience combined with my research and you know looking at the experiences of other people who have had personal experiences is if it's a deceased loved one or somebody that we miss very very dearly um, for them to come to us in the physical world in the physical dimension <clears throat> excuse me for them to come to us in the physical world or in the physical dimension while we're awake, it can become very difficult to separate the veil between the two worlds. And what I mean by this is I'm relating this to my grandfather who passed away. Um, if my grandpa were to come and visit me, you know, in this physical realm, it would become uh, very difficult to keep this, this world and this dimension and where he is in the beyond, whatever it is that you believe is separate. And it becomes difficult to really separate the two and you might get caught up in, um, how do I explain this? In constantly looking to communicate with them as though they're actually here. And it can become very, very painful for you, you know, when they're not appearing or things like that. However, when you're sleeping, they kind of get the control of when they come and it also, um, and it also really gives you the opportunity to understand that while they are gone here in this world, you know, they exist. They exist elsewhere and it's not really the end and they're just on the other side of the veil. Um, rather than them coming to you in the physical world. It's, it's less painful for you if that makes any sense to you. And it's difficult to put into words what I'm trying to convey here. But essentially if my grandpa was here as if, you know, if I saw him as if I could see one of you guys in real life, um, it would become very difficult for me to, to accept and move forward in the fact that he's gone. And a really great example of this would be if you lose a partner. So, you know, your husband, your wife, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, whatever it may be. Um, if you were to lose them and they were to come to you all the time, like as a ghost, it would become very difficult for you to move on. Whereas if they come to you and give you messages in your dreams, you can accept the messages for what they were, but still be able to move on in the physical world. Now moving on to like another point as to why spirits will tend to visit people in their dreams is as far as skepticism goes. So if there's somebody who's an atheist or somebody who's a skeptic or somebody who just doesn't really believe in anything unbelievable <laughs> like the paranormal, um, it can become very startling and jarring to them if your loved ones or a spirit were to come to you, you know, right in front of your very face. But when they visit you in a dream, it's really up to you to decide if it was a true message or if it was your mind. Well, that can become the difficult part with spirits visiting us while we're asleep. It can also be a very beautiful thing for those who don't necessarily believe because it's not so startling, it's not so in your face, but they're there to communicate. Now, another really interesting thing to consider when you're kind of thinking about the concept of spirits and ghosts visiting you while you are asleep is the fact that around 3 a.m. is when the veil is said to be the thinnest. Now some people think that it's devil's hour, some people think it's witching hour. There's really a lot of controversy and differences in opinions as far as what it is. But I mean at the end of the day whatever it is that you believe in, if you believe it's witching hour, devil's hour, angel, whatever you think it is, the one common denominator between it all is the fact that the veil is the thinnest. So if you're sleeping and you're somebody who it's difficult for the spirit world to communicate with you or you're somebody who attracts it, it's more common that during these hours when the veil is the thinnest and it's easiest for them to communicate with us, that that would be a time that they would come to you. And most of the time you would be sleeping during this hour. So it's easier for them to come into your dreams. A lot of times our spirit guides will try to communicate with us in our dreams and our guardian angels and things like that. Like I said, because your spiritual ego is completely diminished, because you're completely open and receptive to it, and because it's not such an unbelievable thing to do. And it's a really good way for them to instill messages in your mind without you even realizing. So something that I find really interesting about this is the fact that sometimes if you're somebody who doesn't dream, so like I know people who don't dream, they just, they, they forget their dreams, they don't dream, your spirit guides and guardian angels can actually communicate with you in your dreams. You may not remember it and you may not um, actually like have seen it, but you might get a gut feeling during the day or you might wake up and like, oh, I, I know what I need to do about this or I know how I feel about this and that's just because your spiritual ego was down and it was a good opportunity for your spirit guides to kind of get in your head without getting in your head. Now if you're somebody who wants to communicate with the spirit world and you want to really, you know, maybe communicate with someone who's passed away or you want to communicate with your spirit guides or things like that, um, I would actually suggest dreaming as a place to start because all of the reasons that I've listed. And one way that you could do this is before you go to sleep, kind of do a prayer, so to speak. Make sure to include in there that you are only allowing things of white light and goodness into your reality, but that if your spirit guides have any messages or you can say it out loud to, you know, a deceased loved one or things like that and ask advice or ask 
them to come into your dreams and you may be very, very surprised at the fact that they do. One thing that I've talked about a lot is anything of love and light, any spirit that is of love and light never wants to frighten you. That's never their intention. It's never anything that they would do. If something is trying to scare you and if you told it, and if you've told something that it's scaring you and it continues to do it, then it is not of light and love. So sometimes without even realizing, you may be a little bit afraid or you may not be completely open and that's why you don't get messages. So a really, really great place to start would actually be with dreaming because it's a really, because your walls are down and your, your mind is open and your spiritual ego is down and you're just really, really receptive to it. So I think if you're somebody who wants to communicate with somebody, make sure to say that you know only things of light and love and make sure to make a statement that anything dark or negative is not allowed within because that's really important. You need to have good intent and you need to make it very, very known um, as to what you're accepting. But I think that dreaming is a really great place to start because it's one of the easiest ways for the spirit world to communicate with us. Well, you guys, I know this is kind of all over the place, but there's a lot of different factors that go into things. Dreaming is an amazing thing and it's super cool when somebody who has passed away or a spirit guide or even a spirit in the, in the vicinity is able to communicate with you through your dreams and maybe tell you some messages or um, really share things with you. I've had a lot of personal experiences where I know for a fact that it was a spirit and that it was um, a deceased loved one because there was just no way that I could have known some of the things that I found out. If you want me to do a video on that, I definitely, definitely will. But dreaming was one of the first places that I really started to learn how to communicate with the other side. And it was really where I started to notice my gifts. So if you're somebody who wants to do what I said and really communicate with things through your dreams, I would start a dream journal as well and jot down, you know, all the messages that you get and really start to read through them and analyze them. But at the end of the day, dreaming is a time when spirits and ghosts tend to, to enter and um, and I personally think it's really cool. I don't know what you guys think, but I've had enough experience with it that I think it's a pretty awesome thing. Let me know in the comments below if any of you guys have ever been visited by a deceased loved one or a spirit or a ghost in your dreams. Was it a positive experience? Was it a negative experience? I wanna hear all about it and I'm definitely gonna be reading through the comments to hear your guys' experiences. So if you have any, please, please, please let me know in the comments below because I, I stay at home all day, you guys, most of the days, and I just love reading through all of your comments. So please do that, and that is it for today's video. If you guys are new to my channel, or you are just not yet subscribed, but you do enjoy my videos, please, please, please join the Reese's Pieces, click that subscribe button, turn your post notifications on, and also please give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it, because I really, really appreciate it when you guys do that. So if you did like it, please do that. Um, remember, my loves, do all things with kindness. And until next time, I love you.